things are changing very rapidly in the Indian automotive scenario. The last time I compared these two cars head to head in 2020, it was a diesel comparison and now there are no more diesels in the mid-size sedan segment. That's not the only big change. This mid-size sedan segment has actually garnered a lot of steam recently with entrants like the Virtus and the Slavia hotting up the game. But this old rivalry has always existed. Now with an all new Verna and the city getting a facelift recently, we had to put them head to head again. The fact is that 50% of all Honda cities sold are automatic and the closest match to it is the 1.5 naturally aspirated Verna with CVT transmission. Well, if it's the turbo engine variant that you're interested in of the Verna, well, we've done that comparison for you as well and you can click on the link on your screen right now. Do remember to also subscribe to the Autocar channel and press on the bell icon to get notified every time we load a video so you never miss anything. Well, let's get down to brass tacks and dive into this comparison, shall we? I'm going to do this a bit differently. I'm going to give you all the facts and figures first. The City has three variants, V, VX and ZX, while the Verna has two variants, the SX and the SXO. The base variant of the Verna may be a lakh more, but for that you get a lot more features too, like six airbags, auto-dimming mirror, LED headlamps, 16-inch alloys, chrome door handles, ambient lighting, wireless charger, a sunroof, powered driver's seat and a smart trunk. But the base city gets ADAS, which the Verna doesn't. Now at the top end, the difference in price is marginal. The Verna gets powered driver's seat, ventilated seats, smart trunk, front parking sensors and rear disc brakes over the city. While the city has lane watch camera, rain sensing wipers, wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto over the Verna. So that's the feature comparison for you, but now let's dive into the interiors. Well, from the feature list, you can see it's some of one and a few of another, and you've really got to decide which ones are more important for you in a car. But I think uh, stay tuned and listen on because what I'm going to tell you is once you get into these cars, there are nuances that actually make some of the features better even though both cars have them. For starters, on the inside of the Verna, the interior feels far more modern. Uh, this nice dual tone colouring, this leather that runs right across the dash and of course these dual screens from the Hyundai Ioniq which not only look good and far more modern but they are far better to use. The graphics are much crisper, the touch sensitivity is much better, it's easier to use and you can see it on the go without glare and reflection much better and much sharper. It's also got some cool features. Uh, this control at the bottom which becomes your AC controls at the touch of a button can also become the shortcuts to your infotainment screen. You can pull up all the shortcuts here as well. On the practicality front, you've got that wireless charging and cup holders and I mention this because in the Honda City, you have to choose between wireless charging or cup holders. You can't use both at the same time while this cabin gives you that benefit. And of course, another nuance and difference which I kind of like because I listen to a lot of music when I'm driving is that this music system, the Bose one, sounds so much better. That's the driver's point of view, but what's it like to be a passenger? Now while the Verna may have shone from the driver's seat, in the back seat the Honda City does claim back its ground. For starters, I've done a back-to-back -back comparison with the front seat set in exactly the same position and I do have a considerable amount more of leg room over here. It's not only that, this floorboard tilts up slightly so when you stretch out your feet, it is pretty comfortable. The seat base is not quite as large as the Hyundai Verna so you don't have as much under thigh support but it's not uncomfortable. The one big difference here really is the armrest. This one feels too low and falls flat to the seat, while the Hyundai Verna has a much better armrest at a much better level. Over here, you do have better legroom for the third passenger, but as you can see, the seat contouring is really not conducive for the third passenger. The Hyundai Verna has better contouring for the third passenger, but not as much legroom over there. The interior, and the back seat of the Honda City on the whole feels a lot more airy, 
because this window area is larger with this rear quarter glass and it's also lower. It's not quite as high as in the Hyundai Verna. So on the whole, this does feel more spacious. Although the Verna has the larger wheelbase on paper, the city does open up more leg room in the back seat when compared. Now, right at the back, the Verna has the edge on boot space as far as volume goes and the boot also visually looks wider. However, the city has the lower loading lip, making it easier to haul your luggage in. Now, so far, it's a closely matched comparison, but let's get the show on the road. Like I said before, this is the comparison of the 1.5 naturally aspirated engines mated to the CVT gearboxes. Now, while both are almost identical on capacity, the city has the better power figure with just about 6 HP more, while torque figures are almost identical with the city getting 1 Nm more. The question is, what do all these figures actually mean out on the road? Let's begin with the all-new Verna first. On the go, straight up, a lot easier to settle into a comfortable driving position with the partially powered seats here in the Hyundai Verna. Another thing that makes a huge difference, especially on a very hot day like this, is having that ventilated seat right at your fingertips. Cools you down instantly. On the performance front, the Hyundai Verna does have enough power, but it's a typical CVT where you know, when you want to get going, you have to extend your foot and you get that rubber band effect. And actually, it's very tempting to, you know, when you want to get going, slam your foot to the floor. But when you do that, this takes even longer to get going. It actually works much better at path throttle. So put your foot down halfway, be slightly patient, and then you get a move on quite effortlessly. The Verna doesn't respond to pedal inputs quite as efficiently as the city. And in traffic, especially when you have to constantly slow down and build up power again, you feel the difference. And when you want that little bit more power quicker, there's always a dab on the paddles that brings that shift up much quicker. You will find yourself using those paddles quite frequently in the Verna. Now, you do have drive modes uh, in the Hyundai Verna. Eco for your casual, comfortable driving where you want to extract maximum efficiency. Then you have normal, which is what I suggest everybody really use because the responses do get a little bit better. And then, of course, if you're someone who likes driving a lot and you want enthusiastic responses, well, there is sport. But let me tell you, the changes are really incremental. They don't make drastic differences. And you still have to build up that power. The Verna just makes you work that little harder to get a move on. Now, when you do push for overtakes and you need to get more out of these cars, you'll find that uh, you do hear that CVT, that engine strain sound a lot more in the Hyundai Verna. you need to push it harder to actually get it going. It's not quite as responsive as the Honda City. But what you do need to know is that the Hyundai Verna masks the sound of the engine much better, so it doesn't filter through to the cabin as much as it does in the Honda City. That does sound a lot gruffer. The differences show in the test figures. Whether it's flat-out acceleration or in-gear numbers, the city has the clear advantage. And that seems to extend further to the actual experience behind the wheel. Now, the steering, while it's nice and light and easy to make U-turns in or nip in and out of city traffic, just doesn't feel as well-weighted as the Honda City. Now, don't get me wrong, it's a good steering and it's better than the older Verna. It is an improvement, but in this comparison, it just doesn't give you as much confidence as the Honda City does. While I point out these differences, I must add that the Verna has closed the gap now, whether it's handling or ride quality. 
Low speed ride in the Hyundai Verna is quite good on its own. Um, but as you pick up the pace, it does get firmer. And in fact, on the whole, in this comparison, the Verna's ride is firmer than that of the Honda City. So it does let a lot more filter through to the passengers, especially when you go over expansion gaps, bumps and potholes. Both cars are equipped with camera-based autonomous driving assistance systems, ADAS, for added safety. They both get emergency braking, forward collision warning, lane keep assist, lane departure warning and blind spot monitor to name a few. What I found was that the Verna identified lane markings better for the lane assist function, while the City performed erratically. However, the City gets adaptive cruise control and leading vehicle departure alert, which this variant of the Verna does not get. Well, if you're enjoying watching this video, then please remember to give this video a like and of course subscribe to the All Car channel as well. Okay, let's move into the Honda City now. All the adjustments are really manual in the Honda City, so uh, just a little more effort to get your right seating position, but of course it's easy to find. Uh, another thing which uh, instantly struck me was that this screen is really not easy to read on the go and especially on a sunny day like this when there's glare uh, it quite fades out but what is more enjoyable in the Honda City is the performance you really don't need to push the pedal down that hard to get it going uh, it feels far more responsive it feels lighter on its feet and it gets going a lot easier You've already seen the acceleration figures and trust me, you can feel that difference out on the road as well. Whether it's cutting through traffic or accelerating away on an open stretch, it's a much quicker getaway in the Honda City. Now, I've been driving it in sport mode, but even if you put it in the regular drive mode, uh, this does feel quick enough on its feet. It is responsive and honestly, it's a nice engine, really revs and revs and revs and lets you enjoy its power. You know, as a result, you don't really have to uh, press down hard on the accelerator to get the Honda City going, so you don't hear that CBT rubber band effect, but when you do, it's a lot louder in the Honda City. You hear that? Stretch this engine and you hear it a lot more. On the whole, sounds filter through to this cabin a lot more too. There's a lot of drumming sound that comes from tyres and from the road. But the suspension does work more quietly than that of the Hyundai Verna. So you don't hear that crack, you know, when you go over stiff ruts like that, you hear it more in the Verna than you hear it in the city. This suspension works away silently. While that may sound confusing, let me break it up for you. The Verna lets you hear the road imperfections more and with its firmness, you just won't find the back seat as comfy as in the Honda City, whose suspension is more pliant and quieter. But as far as engine refinement goes, the Verna does the better job of keeping sounds out of the passenger's earshot. While this does not have the ventilated seat feature, what I do have to tell you is that the blowers work far more efficiently in this car. So when you want to cool down on a hot day, just put the fan on full and it works quite well. The Honda City may be a little bit more old-fashioned in many ways, but it is still a technically sound car. Now, the steering in the Honda City does give you far more confidence. It does feel like the weightier of the two. Uh, gives you more feedback, more connect to the road. So, out on the road, the city has a lot of advantages over the Verna. Now, where the Honda City gains more ground is on ride quality. It's definitely the more supple, more pliant ride quality of the two. 
it lets much less filter through to the passenger. So in that sense, it does feel a lot more comfortable. There's no underlying firmness like there is in the Hyundai Verna. So I've pretty much covered everything except the way they look. The Verna definitely is the more modern design, but its looks are pretty polarizing. The city may be old, but there is a timeless elegance to the car. And that's my personal view. But do drop us a comment telling us what you think. Okay, so to sum it up, uh, if it's bells and whistles and a more modern car that you're after, then the Hyundai Verna will definitely do the job much better because it looks more modern on the inside, even the exteriors. And of course, it packs in a few more of those features as well with the ADAS working a little bit better than it does in the city. In its new Avtar, the Verna feels competent and more practical than before and definitely offers you more bang for your buck. It's got good enough performance and good enough ride quality, except that in this comparison on the technicals, it just doesn't match up to the Honda City, which still holds its ground. It may look a little bit more dated and have the more dated interiors, but technically it still is very sound. The performance is better, the ride quality is better, and it even has that little bit more space in the back seat. Which is why it's our winner being the better car to drive or be chauffeured in.